three years ago, we embarked on an expedition to the highest volcano in the world, Ojos del Salado. Located in the Chilean desert, 300 kilometers away from the civilization, this peak stands at 6,893 meters above sea level. Due to its extremely dry climate, it's only partially covered by glacier. This makes it the site of regular attempts to reach the summit with motor vehicles. The current world record sits just 200 meters below the summit, at 6,694 meters. But no one ever dared an attempt with an electric vehicle. That's why we traveled there, to find a path for our self-developed, solar-powered electric truck to the top of the mountain to set the new altitude world record for land vehicles. Join us as we recount our journey and the challenges we faced along the way. In January 2019, we flew from Switzerland to Santiago de Chile to the middle of summer in the Southern Hemisphere. We planned the expedition without any travel agency or guide, and we were in charge of the complicated time management and logistics. So we rented a 4x4 truck to reach the remote mountain. To manage the high altitude climb, we brought a lot of equipment, including our mountain bikes. We were determined to become some of the first people ever to ride at such an altitude. But where would we store all our stuff safely? Quickly we decided to turn the rental truck into a camper in which we could also sleep. We took some measurements, drew up a plan and drove to the home improvement store to get the tools and materials. Finally, we were ready for the first step of the expedition. But how do you even climb to an altitude of nearly 7000 meters? Because of the lower air pressure, less than half the oxygen is available compared to sea level. If the body is unprepared, it reacts with headache, disorientation, unconsciousness and ultimately death. To avoid that, several weeks of acclimatization at lower altitudes are necessary. To do that, while staying close to civilization, we decided to climb the Cerro El Plomo, towering over the city of Santiago at 5,424 meters. drove to the ski resort of La Parva at around 3000 meters, where we would spend a week with training tours before attempting the summit. The next few days we spent doing acclimatization tours to nearby peaks up to 4500 meters. To chill out time after training, we used to decorate the truck. Then came finally the day for the summit attempt to Cerro El Plomo. It meant a three-day hike into a remote valley, so we had to carry enough food and sleeping equipment for two freezing nights at high altitude. We spent the second night at 4,500 meters and started out in the early morning, careful to maintain a sustainable pace much slower than at home in the Alps. 
we reached the summit euphoric about our personal mountain bike altitude record. We felt ready to tackle the much higher Ojos del Salado. But first, we got to enjoy the 4000 vertical meter descent to Santiago on some of the nicest trails we've ever seen. Still hyped from our successful first tour, we drove north to Copiapó, the last outpost of civilization. In the mining town, we bought supplies for more than 10 days out in the desert. From here, the stakes would be higher. No one would come to help us if we got into trouble, so the risk management and planning were crucial to leave a chance for success. Full of optimism, we drove out to the Atacama Desert. The landscape was fascinating from the start. Chile is sitting on the border of two tectonic plates, which makes it one of the richest countries in natural resources like copper, lithium, gold and silver. Traces of it were visible everywhere. Even in the remotest places, generations of prospectors had carved mine shafts into the mountains. Of course, our curiosity made us inspect some abandoned camps up close. As we read in historic records, for every successful mine, there must be hundreds of smaller, family-run operations that had to be abandoned if the ground didn't prove as rich as expected and left the owners impoverished. For us as mountain bikers, the enormous mountains of smooth gravel had a special appeal. We could ride them on the bikes like we would ride a powder line in winter, with speed and big turns. After 300 kilometers on partially paved roads, we had to turn off and cover the last 30 kilometers to our destination through the open desert. Right from the start, we proved ourselves as off-road rookies. 
But after some digging and half the air released from the tires, the journey went on. Our previous acclimatization allowed us to move straight to 4,700 meters, where we decided to set up camp for a few days. Now we finally got a glimpse of the mountain that we have been thinking of day and night for the past six months. We knew what was laying ahead from the description of other expedition teams. From our campsite, we would drive up the so-called Rocky Road, known for destroying car tires. Arriving at the base camp Atacama at 5,200 meters, we would spend more time acclimatizing. From there it was possible to drive up the even more dangerous trail to Camp Tejos at 5,800 meters, where we would spend the last night before attempting the summit. On foot, we would then have to hike the cone of the volcano, carrying the bikes on our backs till the edge of the crater, where we would have to do some rock climbing to reach the actual summit. But for now, we were going to enjoy the life in our camp while acclimatizing. In an unpleasant way, we were reminded that we were still in a high altitude environment. We later learned about the Invierno Baltiplanico, a weather phenomenon that origins from the dry desert air from the west and the humid air from the forest in the east fighting over the Andes mountain range. In some years, it leads to heavy snowfall in summer. Ironically, we visited during the snowiest summer in years and no one had reached the summit of Ojos del Salado in months. Luckily, we were unaware of this and set out for base camp on the rocky road. For two hours, we were driving carefully over the sharp rocks in a whiteout. We reached the base camp at the Kama at 5,200 meters, where other expedition teams were already waiting for their chance to reach the summit. The very exotic weather meant that the snowfall was often accompanied by thunder and lightning. Not the best place to be outside on a flat open field. We spent hours in the car till the snowfall stopped. After nearly a week, the window of good weather which we heard of by a satellite telephone finally arrived. The past days had left a thick layer of snow on the mountain and it would be an extreme effort to be the first ones to make a path through it. But we knew this was our only chance to attempt the summit. To save some energy, we decided to drive up to Camp Tejos at 5,800 meters. It was a big risk, as we had already destroyed one tire and were now driving with a spare wheel. It is a crazy story that there is even some kind of refuge at this altitude. In the 80s, a Chilean military helicopter crashed at this site in winter. The rescue team arrived after many days with a bulldozer that pulled two shipping containers on metal skis. After the rescue mission, the containers stayed till today. This incident might have even started the idea of altitude world records at Ojos del Salado. The terrain got more difficult and we had to dig through some snow to continue. Halfway up, our nightmare became reality. A sharp rock, hidden under the snow, sliced the sidewall of the tire. In that moment, we were in big trouble. We filled the tire with a ceiling spray, but the hole was too big, so we also stuffed some cut-off rubber from the tire thread into the hole. The tire still didn't hold any air. 300 kilometers away from civilization, a flat tire and no spare. Immediately, the most extreme scenarios went through our heads. But we decided that we still had to try and climb the mountain. Because this was our only chance we would ever get. At nearly 6000 meters, the body can't recover anymore during sleep. 
We were just hiding in our sleeping bags till we could start the final push. With us at Camp Tejos was a team of the Chilean Army Mountain Forces on the training mission. They started hiking at 3 in the morning. Because of the howling wind, we waited another hour before we put our bikes on our backs and got on the way. It was around minus 20 degrees with very strong winds, definitely the coldest we've ever felt. In less than two hours we overtook the soldiers who were a lot less acclimatized than we. Unfortunately David had to return to the camp because his feet got so cold that he couldn't feel them anymore and we had no way to warm them up. But now we were the first ones in the untracked snow and it got deeper the higher we reached. At around 6600 meters I decided to ditch my bike as it slowed me down too much and the snow got too deep to ride. We reached the edge of the crater from where it was only 200 vertical meters left to the summit, but the snow was now almost waist deep and we only moved in slow motion. Our heads were hurting a lot and we felt like passing out after every step. Still, Patrick refused to leave his bike behind. We were already hiking nine hours when we finally reached the vertical rocks just below the summit. Here we would have to do about 20 meters of rock climbing. One of us was climbing ahead and the other one at the back would reach up the bike before climbing up himself. And we repeated that till we reached the summit. By the lack of video footage you can tell the mental state we were in when we reached the top. In a way it felt like being drunk and having a horrible hangover at the same time. But still we were proud and happy to have made it and to be the first people this season to reach the summit. On the way down, we felt like being reborn with every step. The headache went away and the air felt so thick we could almost bite it off. It was a quick descent and soon we could ride our bikes on the snow. Only back at Camp Tejos, we remembered our big problem with the flat tire. By the time we reached the car, we just tried to pump it again. And miraculously, the tire sealant had done its job in the past 30 hours and it kept the air. As carefully as possible, we now drove down. After another night in the base camp, we drove back almost all the way to Copiapo and enjoyed a night of camping in beautiful t-shirt weather. Only now we had the chance to contemplate on our experience. Due to the snow, we couldn't scout the driving track beyond Camp Tejos, but we now knew that we are able to survive in this high altitude and we are committed to go back in our self-built solar-powered electric truck and beat the altitude world record.